the Brave you want to be and exactly where you could put your car and trust that it will stick. However, this driver had a pair of front row starts each of the first two races of the season. Driving the number 16, Aaron Sales and Lease and Elliott Properties Ford out of Supply, North Carolina, the number 16 of Chad McCombie now. Didn't have quite the qualifying effort at New River to match that, but he overcame that with a Crossroads Harley-Davidson Hard Charger Award going from the 14th to the sixth position in that race. His first lap is gonna be third fastest for now. Second time through for Chad McCombie. He's actually gonna go a tick slower on his third lap around. So Chad McCombie uh, gonna be put out of a front row starting spot for the second week in a row. Happy to see this driver back in a late model stock car. After the last time that we saw him, he went off on the hook after a very hard crash off turn number four at Hickory. Now, granted, he wasn't out for any particular reason. Other than that, he had a schedule conflict. He was off running a NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series event at Texas, where he picked up a top 20 last Friday. Driving the family-owned team in the Jones Utilities and Construction, number 44 out of Fredericksburg, Virginia. Welcome back to Connor Jones. Jones' first time by is going to be a 14, 5, 6, 8, fourth of four. He has one prior Cars Tour start here at Orange County Speedway. Came home 14th in that race. Picked up a top 10 here in a weekly event last October. Second lap for that of Connor Jones appears to be a bit of the trend. He slows down on his second time through, so Jones will remain fourth for now. Just popping up into your picture, the driver who has set the bar here in 2024 early on. He entered New River All-American as your points leader, and he does so the same. Five points right now over Mini Tyrell for the championship points lead. Drive the number 22, Autos by Nelson, Blue Ridge Color, Town Bank, and Castrol Toyota out of Hampton, Virginia for Nelson Motorsports. This is Connor Hall in a backup car as he wheels it off the top side. A little bit of a slide from Connor Hall in first lap. It's going to be a tick slow for Connor Hall. 14.502 for that number 22. Started third in the season opener. Followed that up with the seventh at Hickory and tenth at New River All American Speedway. For now, Connor Hall, he's going to get a better second lap on his second go around, but not going to be able to improve on the scoring pylon. Fourth fastest for the number 22, Nelson Motorsports Toyota. Second time we have seen the 2022 Cars Tour Late Model Stock Rookie of the Year in competition this season. He scored his best career finish last time out at Southern National Motorsports Park. It was a fourth place finish, bouncing back after an early crash. This is his first Cars Tour start here, but he did run the Orange Crush with this car and this team back in March. This is the Medic Corp, Tidewater Safety Shoes and Wyatt Heavy Machine Double Zero for that of Chase Burrow out of King William, Virginia, and his family-owned team partnered up with Sellers Racing. His first time around is going to be six of the six cars that have been on the racetrack so far. Let's see what he's got as he comes to the checkers. The second lap for Burrow is going to be a pretty good pickup, up to third. One-tenth off the lap laid down by McCaskill, as we now have Chase Burrow up into the top three. Trying to warm up those tires is your most recent winner in the Z-Max Cars Tour presented by Sound Gear. Got the job done at New River All-American Speedway and coming to a place where he was very fast in the Orange Crust 200. You had a good argument that this car was the fastest one on the property there. Just kind of didn't really quite hit the invert uh, well enough a couple of weeks ago. And the number six, Black Acid Apparel, Sterling Building Group, WG Speaks, and Caswell Glass Ford for RNS Race Cars out of Madison, North Carolina. It's Bobby McCarty, and he's proving why he has been a fast race car all weekend long, goes right to the top of the charts at a 259. Does he better that effort on his second go around? Not able to do so, but for now, two RNS race cars on the front row with McCarty and McCaskill. Here is the driver who picked up the iRacing Halfway Leader Award last week at New River All-American Speedway. This is a new car for this team, trying something out after what he admits has been a bit of a struggle to start 2024. This is the High Rock Vodka, Western Mountain Incorporated, and GXS wraps number 37 for Jimmy Moore in racing. The driver out of Claremont, North Carolina, Landon Huffman coming around to complete his first lap on the clock, chasing the 14-319 that Bobby McCarty just laid down. Hoffman will click off the seventh fastest lap time the first time by. He's a little bit more than about two and a half tenths to be able to leapfrog his way to the top of the charts. 
Second time around for Huffman will be a little bit slower, so you remain seventh of the seven cars that have been out of the racetrack so far. And again, a number of drivers who were coming out to this racetrack, they've never driven a late model stock at Orange County Speedway. This, however, would not be one of them. And, you know, anywhere that this number 23, Matt Piercy Racing Chevrolet has been before is typically one that this 23 is fast at. The number 23, Velasta, per your tank lines and Race City Steel Chevrolet out of Full Shear, Texas. It's the number 23 of Cade Brown. Coming around this time, Brown will face the white flag in a higher entry and exit than we've seen from a couple of these competitors. And for Brown, it's a good opening lap. Third fastest for Cade Brown, 14, 368. Got a weekly win here one year ago, and Brown's second time through is just a tick slower. So Cade Brown, solid qualifying effort at number 23 in third provisionally. Tonight is the second double header race of the 2024 season. This driver intends on running most of those double headers, if at all possible, with her family owned race team. Picked up a top five here in the past in the Carolina Pro Series. And picked up her best finish of the year earlier this season at Southern National Motorsports Park. It was a 14th place effort, nearly getting a career best 12th like she did at Motor Mile a few years ago. In the Chevrolet and Wheel of Trucking Victory Customs Trailer number 71 out of Dryden, Michigan, this is Katie Hedinger, who clocks in the seventh fastest lap time the first time around. Hedinger off turn four to the checkers, gets a little bit sideways, coming back to the line and picks it up to third. What wow. a second lap for Hedinger, who moves up to P3. And again, the scoring charts a little bit earlier throughout the practice sessions, we saw that that car was capable of going fast, but what a qualifying effort there for the 71 of Katie Hedinger and looking to kind of keep that trend going is the number 15 Leisure Time Reynolds Chevrolet out of Statesville, North Carolina. This is Ryan Millington. After struggling a little bit in the season opening race at Southern National Motorsports Park, has turned the tide an eighth and a seventh place finish at both Hickory Motor Speedway and New River All-American respectively. Currently nestles at number 15, tied for eighth with Carson Quapple in the season standings. And Millington, a great opening time around 14.361. Millington utilizing that high groove will not be able to go faster on his second lap around. So Ryan Millington currently in the top five. Next up, buying for the Thunder Road Harley Davidson Pole Award, a driver we just heard from before he strapped into this race car, which he called bad fast, hoping that qualifying goes his way in the TG Motorsports and ABC Hosiery number one Chevrolet for Tour of Chassis. Andrew Grady, as Blake mentioned, tied a career best effort with a ninth place run at New River All American Speedway. Perhaps most importantly, finally got the black cloud out from above him after he has been on quite the roll of bad luck. First time through for that of Grady is going to be 10th. It is going to be a 14.510 for that of Grady. It was one of the most consistent cars in practice, hoping for an opportunity here to pick up some time this second time through. Grady will pick up one spot in line ahead of that of our current points leader and that of Connor Hall who rounds out the top 10. Grady to ninth. Turns things over to this 0-5 and again kind of a late entry uh, on the entry blank this weekend for Orange County Speedway but he'll come around and face the green flag driving the CR Phillips Electrical, McKay Capital Partners, Glass Guys and Tyler Hughshock Chevrolet out of Richmond, Virginia. This is the 0-5. Mason Bailey, frequent competitor at both Dominion Raceway and Langley Speedway up in Virginia, was second in the track championship points at Dominion just a couple of years ago. And Bailey, first time through, will clock in 11th fastest, 14.5 at 32. He's running a little bit of a lower line through three and four uh, than what we've seen oftentimes here and is able to find a little bit of speed out there on the racetrack, improves to a 14.501. 
Here's a driver who many have penciled as a threat to win. He won the Orange Crush event that the racetrack held here last March. And as we mentioned, making his 40th career Cars Tour late model stock start. Picked up a top five in his only other appearance so far this season at Southern National. And now he has the keys to this race car yet again. And the win site development in Fayetteville heating and air number 17 for Tom Usry Racing out of Alito, Texas. Here comes Caden Honeycutt completing his first time lap. And the first time through is going to be ninth fastest. So Honeycutt hoping for a bit of an increase in terms of lap time here. Or should I say decrease in lap time, increase in speed as he comes to the checkers. Honeycutt second time through is going to jump up to third. So he did get that pick up there on lap two. Honeycutt up to the third spot. And Blake, just as we saw in the orange crust, one, two, three, all RNS affiliated. They're going to be pretty happy about that, but this driver could very easily break up that top three stranglehold at the front of the field. Driving the number eight, Bass Pro Shop Chevrolet for Junior Motorsports. Your two-time defending series champion out of Mooresville, North Carolina, Carson Quapel, now out on the racetrack to make his time in single car qualifying. And first lap through for that of Carson Quapel is going to be 12th fastest, 14.458. Now, Eric, it's not uncommon, I would say, too often that this Junior Motorsports number eight is down on the speed charts. They don't often stick her up uh, like many of the teams out there do, but they've struggled on the speed charts. And for now, Quapel 12th fastest, 14.458 is where he'll stand and not where that team, I'm sure, expected to place that car in qualifying. From our vantage point, that car looked like a handful. Yeah. Off turn number two, both times by. One of the best stories to come out of New River All-American Speedway. One year ago to the day from a harrowing crash in the pro late model event at Hickory last season. The return to the Cars Tour for Mort Fort Mill, South Carolina's Isabella Robusto for lead polling and performance in the JBL and Mobile One number 55. And right now, her first time through is sporty. Fourth fastest from the first lap through for that of Isabella Robusto who picked up her first career Z-Max Cars Tour top 10 last week at New River. Now back for her first appearance here at Orange County Speedway and the bit of a bobble in three and four is going to hinder the possibility for Robusto climbing further up the pylon, but a great run there, P4 for Robusto. And you know, the two teams that we were looking at coming into this weekend and kind of what we've seen through practice, RNS race cars and Lee Pulliam performance proving why they are so good. And by the way, Queen will be up next, but we'll give some time here to the number 45 Louisville Dryer Company, Stan Steele, Hot Mix Parts and Service, and Industrial Kiln Chevrolet out of Simpsonville, Kentucky. Bryce Applegate, who's had himself some great qualifying efforts as of late, started fifth at Hickory Motor Speedway and followed that up with a seventh place start before eventually settling for the 15th position at New River All-American. First time through though, 16th fastest for that number 45 group. And can Applegate improve? He's gonna be able to jump both Huffman and Bailey on the scoring pile on 14th for the number 45. Well, as Blake was mentioning, his Lee Pulliam performance teammate currently sitting P4 on the racetrack. This driver won the Thunder Road Harley-Davidson pole last week, as well as the MPI Up on the Wheel Award. He's going to be up on the wheel here, trying to get himself another pole on the season. Could be his second. This is the best repair company. And Folsom Fence Supply, 0-3 out of Chesapeake, Virginia, for Lee Pulliam performance, Brendan Butterbean Queen. And here he comes to complete his first time lap. And it is going to be 10th in the running order. A 14-4 for that of Butterbean, who's looking for a big pickup here, off three and four. Queen to the line, checkered flag. He will pick it up, but only to eight spot for that of Butterbean. Try to rebound after the misfortune at New River last week. He came back from a spin late in the race to finish 11. And again, 31 cars set to take time here in this qualifying session this afternoon. Only 30 spots available on the starting grid. So we will look to the 28 fastest times. If you run the top 28, you do not have to worry about anything else. And we'll see if this number 57 car for Carroll Speed Shop can do that. The Josh Sellers Chevrolet out of Mooresville, North Carolina is driven by Connor Mosak, who's filling in here for the Carroll Speed Shop, who's rotated around a couple of drivers in this 57 car, which 
noteworthy here. This is the first race that we will take owner's points from 2024. And the first race of the season, the original 95 goes to this 57 car when it comes to owner's points. Connor Mosak, though, second time through is going to be 18th fastest, 14 five five two for connor mosak next up is the driver who has quite the batting average in terms of cars tour late model stock races trying to make his third career start and second of the season in his two prior races finished in the top 10 both times this is the constant owen burkett one j out of durham north carolina for markham enterprises in a poll last season at wake county this is clay jones on the clock and boy did he hustle that car down into turn number three Jones to the line to put his first lap on the board will be 19th fastest at a 14.552, hoping to be one of the handful who have seen a significant pickup on his second lap through as he slides that car back to the checkers. Jones will pick it up, hopefully, and it should be enough to lock him in. A 14.468 for that of Clay Jones, 15th for now. <laughs> Looks like the number 11 needing a little bit of help from the crew to get that car off and sailing at full speed here. But looks like get, able to get up through the gears and he'll come around here to start his dead lap uh, before taking his first official two laps in single car qualifying. Driving the GXS wraps per your tank line Chevrolet for Mike Darn Racing out of Littleton, North Carolina. This is the 11X of Buddy Isles Jr. <laughs> around here to start his time was a multi-time winner here at Orange County Speedway in 2023 so has a little bit of experience here some laps for a driver that is coming over from the dirt world trying to gain as much experience on the asphalt as possible first lap through for Buddy Isles is going to be 21st fastest the slowest car that we've seen out there so far you know I was watching a, a video on Facebook earlier today and Eric I know you'll appreciate this uh Got to take a video of Buddy Isles' daughter, who he always has with him at the racetrack. She was taking her first steps earlier oh, this incredible. week. Oh, incredible. Yeah, so it was. And speaking of incredible, great pickup there on the second lap. We'll jump a couple of cars up to 17. Another driver whose family means absolutely everything to him on the racetrack here was quoted in a NASCAR.com article by that of Brandon White saying that the one thing that this driver wants to do more than anything is bring his family to Cars Tour Cookout Victory Lane. We'll see if he has an opportunity to do that here tonight, making his 20th career Cars Tour start in the Beast of Attire and Auto, Affordable Heating and Air, and Bassett Gunners 04 out of Winston-Salem, North Carolina. This is Ronnie Bassett, Jr. First time around for that of Ronnie Bassett is going to be pretty solid right in the midfield. 12th, the first lap. It's going to be a 14 429 for that of Ronnie Bassett Jr. Ironically, comes into this night also 20th in the championship standings. Second lap for Bassett is not going to be faster than the first, so he will hope to hold on to a top 15 starting spot as we continue to run through the latter portion of qualifying. So impressed with this young man and his transition in the late model stocks. We know his success in being the 2023 NASCAR Canada Series champion, but being able to hop into these cars Give the right feedback because that is so crucial in the Z-Max Cars Tour is something that this Chad Bryant Racing Team and Trayton Lapsovich have been able to embody as a young man out of Grimsby, Ontario, Canada. will put his car through the opening paces here and looks solid on his opening lap thus far. 77 of Trayton Lapsovich looked good but wasn't necessarily the speed that they were looking for 21st goes Trayton Lapsovich on the speed charts 14 549 is there improvement on lap two yes there is jumps nearly 10 positions up into 11 14 401 for Lapsovich looking to crack a spot in the top 10 Here's a driver that very well may threat or contend for the Thunder Road Harley-Davidson pole, making his 60th career Cars Tour late model stock start. Second in the championship points, just five markers behind that of Connor Hall. In the convenience tire and auto, BBL Motorsport, and Solid Rock Carriers number 81 for the family-owned team out of Manassas, Virginia. Here is Timmy Tyrell. Tyrell has been off to a rocket start to the season, and tonight is no different. Six the first time through at a 14-3-5-3. He's in the ballpark in a laps that were laid down by the front runners. 
Second time around for Tyrell, up to third. Got close to the front row, but is just gonna miss out. And the pace for the 81 car continues on into Orange County. You know, I gotta say, he probably appreciates that. That's probably the first time that somebody's called him by his proper name on the broadcast <laughs> in Timmy Tyrell. Of course, his father being Timmy Tyrell, some uh, good uh, stories in that. Well, he shares a name with his father, but his nickname around uh, there business became many and that was the way to separate both he and his father but one of the go or go homers here at orange county speedway a former winner at this racetrack in the z-max cars tour presented by sound gear the number 51 quality heating and air js trams high-tech specialty coating chevrolet out of martinsville virginia this is timothy peters who first time through is going to be 18th fastest which will be good enough to put this number 51 in the show and he's going to be good enough to go to the top 10 on his second go around ties the time for Cade brown or with Cade brown i should say in the eighth spot so peters ninth fastest what a lap there by peters yeah 11-time winner in the truck series. He made a return of the Cars Tour last year. Didn't go as planned, but he is making quite the statement here tonight at Orange County. Next driver on the racetrack for that of qualifying. It's only his second start here at Orange County. But his 20th year in 2019 after being involved in a mid-race crash. This is the Hefner's Towing and Recovery. JHGD Raps AK Performance, number 95 of Jacob Hefner. And Hefner's first lap is gonna be 23rd first time around coming off of an 18th place effort and new river all-american speedway comes into the night tied for 11th in championship points as hefner comes to the line he'll pick up a couple of spots to 22nd for that of jacob hefner as he continues to try to gel with his new organization want to get five cars left to make the time here in qualifying and of course as we uh, do the math here and see who is going to be making the show and who is going to be sent home of course we will update that and await official word from cars tour officials when that becomes available to us but next out on the racetrack we mentioned rns race cars and how good they are at this racetrack here's another bullet in the chamber for that organization and the number 15 wg speaks ford out of mechanicsville virginia this is logan clark and clark's first time through have to take a look and see where he clocks in. It's 27th fastest for now for Logan Clark, so slowest of the bunch as he's the 27th car out onto the racetrack, and he's able to improve up into the 26th position. So Logan Clark struggling a little bit with that number 15 car right now. Similar to that of the 51, this car comes in with no owner's points registered for 2024 thus far, but he certainly knows this racetrack. One of the homegrown heroes of the Orange County Speedway, second in points last season, has a win here already this season, driving the Infinity Communications, Talbot Trucking, Chandler's Towing, number 01, for his family-owned race team. Out of Durham, North Carolina, here is Camden Gully trying to make his Z-Max Cars Tour debut at a place he calls home. And all he's got to do is be within the top 28 to do that, and it's going to be a little bit close. In fact, he should be in 24th fastest for that of Gully on his first go-around. Gully slides his way off the corner. He's going to lock himself in in a big way. Huge pickup for that of Camden Gully as he jumps all the way up to the 18th spot. So Gully is going to race here tonight in front of the hometown crowd. And again, I had a long conversation with him earlier in the day. He said, if we can get in the show, we are going to have a car to fight with in the race. So we'll see how that 0-1 fares once we turn him loose for 125 laps later on tonight. We mentioned some former winners in the field here at Orange County Speedway and Cars Tour competition. This is one of them, and always great to see this face around the racetrack. And the number 62, per your tank lines, Ford for Kevin Harvick Incorporated back in competition in the Z-Max Cars Tour presented by Sound Gear. It is Lane Riggs out of Bahama, North Carolina. And Lane Riggs' first time here in qualifying is gonna go 18th fastest around this racetrack and not gonna be able to find anything better on that second go around. So Lane Riggs, 18th, 14, 4, 46 is where he clocks in with another KHI machine just behind him. And boy, a slide there for Brent Cruz out of the corner. 
Believe it or not, this driver comes into the night not only fifth in championship points, but second in terms of most laps led this season. Only three circuits behind that of Chad McCombie. Had a mechanical problem here last night that left the team scrambling to make sure that this wheelman had a car that was ready to go. In the Mobile One Toyota for Kevin Harvick Incorporated, following his teammate out onto the racetrack, is that of Brent Cruz, who slides off the corner to the white flag. And it's not going to hurt on the stopwatch. Top five, despite burping the back tires coming to the line for Cruz, and he's looking for more. Cruz off the corner, going to come to the line. Second lap through is faster, but not enough. Front row potentially for the third time this season for Cruz as he times in second. Was watching Cruz in practice yesterday and he was the Ball car it. that was running up top higher than anybody despite the fact you can even see some of the speedy try in three and four. That was when Connor Zillish expired a motor here yesterday in practice. You could see some of the remnants of that. Everybody else was kind of babying their way up there. Didn't matter to him as we turn things over to a driver who absolutely loves this racetrack, has been looking for forward to it and could use a turnaround here at his best performing track in the Cars Tour. And the number two, Crossroads Harley Davidson, Grand Atlantic Resorts, and Josh Wines Chevrolet for Carroll Speed Shop out of Oak Ridge, North Carolina. This is Brandon Pierce, whose wife Shelby uh, is a little bit down the road. And Raleigh, she's going to be watching a hockey game going on in about 30 minutes before making her way back out onto the racetrack uh, to spectate here a little bit later. Is Pierce going to clock in 24th fastest for now, 14,496 for the Crossroads Harley Davidson Chevrolet. And Eric, that will leave one man standing at the top of the heap yet again. He left New River All American Speedway at the top of the charts, and he's going to start this race from pole. Bobby McCarty. McCarty, who with this poll will now take sole possession of sixth in terms of all-time poll awards with the Z-Max Cars Tour presented by Sound Gear. This is his sixth career poll, and when you are on a roll, you are on a roll. Our poll sitter and most recent race winner is standing by with Jacqueline Drake. Looking to go back to back after the race win last week and now coming out of the gate on the pole here with the RNS race cars. Bobby, what's going through your mind right now? You have a big smile. Yeah, we uh, we got fast race cars. I want to thank everybody at RNS, uh, Sterling Building Group, Black Acid, uh, DreamWorks, Bill Steen, WG Speaks, just all these guys, Marcus, Triplett, uh, Rob, Caleb. Um, we're building fast race cars, so hopefully we can uh, we can keep this momentum going. You are a guy that's uh, definitely a c competitive here when it comes to the car store. You've been around for a while. You you know Orange County in and out, but what's it going to take for you to bring home another win this season? I think track position mainly. I mean, it, it gets it's really hard to pass in these cars towards the end of the race, and and this is just a, a hard race track to pass at. On top of that, so I think uh, staying out in clean air and just keeping your spot and, and not burning the tires up, I think is what's going to be the ticket. Well, you definitely got track position today. Bobby McCarty, he's going to roll off from the pole, bringing home the Thunder Road Harley-Davidson Pole Award today in late model stocks. That he does. Bobby McCarty will start the race from the front. The one driver who will not be making a start tonight will be the 44 of Connor Jones. He'll be just running in the pro late models, which will come up next for qualifying right after this. Welcome back to the Orange County Speedway. Didn't want to make you wait too long to see how the pro late model field was going to be set here for their portion of battle here tonight on what is an action-packed evening with the Z-Max Cars Tour, the Orange Blossom 250, presented by Folsom Fence Supply, GXS Wraps, and GeoCut. This driver on the racetrack ran several re weekly shows here last year with a worst finish of sixth and a best finish of second. Also has a runner-up finish here in the Carolina Pro Series. In the sets are racing and development, number six, out of Hampton for Georgia. This is Tristan McKee, who lays down the gauntlet here on the first time through at a 14-1-5-8. And as Blake McCann was mentioned earlier, this is the inaugural race for the Cars Tour branded Pro Late Model Series 
Not a lot of history to go off of, but the second time through is going to be faster for that of McKee. 14.106 as he sets the bar. Again, these lighter race cars, these straight rail chassis, they are able to carry so much speed through the corners here at Orange County Speedway. And one of the many drivers that we have in the field who is turning laps around this facility for the first time is, oh, a big wiggle through turns three and four for the number 43 Oxford Baptist Church, Simpson Race Products, and Gourmet Popcorn 113 Chevrolet out of Claremont, North Carolina, Josh Horneman. And unfortunately, Eric, one of the worst times in your qualifying lap that you can step out because it's gonna affect your first lap and may also affect the second one. But this team was pretty confident in what they had in terms of race pace. First lap for Horneman, gonna be second fastest at a 14.474. You can imagine that there will be some improvement here on lap number two, and indeed he does. He nearly picks up a tenth of a second, up to a 14 of 367. Next driver on the racetrack comes into this evening's affair, tied for second in the championship points. He had one of the fastest cars late in the race at Hickory, but just ran out of time and had to settle for second. He has top 10 finishes here in both Cars Tour sanctioned super late model races in which he contested it, including that of a fourth place run here in 2017. This is the Fury Race Cars, Core Race Products, and MMI Racing number 29 for his family owned team. Spencer Davis out of Dawsonville, Georgia goes right to the top at a 14.092. One of the coolest things about an inaugural event in any capacity is someone is guaranteed to be a track record holder when we walk out of here tonight with the pros. Davis is trying to be that driver. He lowers the bar even more at a 14.027 for that of Spencer Davis, who is off to a hot start in 2024. And well, again, he put on a show a couple of weeks ago at Hickory Motor Speedway. Can imagine that tonight will be the same over here in Orange County. But coming through turns three and four in the number seven, Copperfield Contractors, Tar Heel Aaron Lube, and Metal Roofing System Chevrolet for Robin Kreider Racing out of Statesville, North Carolina. This is Justin Kreider, who has a couple of wins to his name here at Orange County Speedway in the Carolina Pro Late Model Series, as well as the Southeast Limited Late Model Series. He also finished second to Brayton Hawes in the inaugural Cars Tour late model stock race held here in 2015. So been able to do it a number of times here. Kreider's first lap through is gonna be third fastest and the second he will stay the same, but a little bit of a pickup on the stopwatch. 14-203 for that number seven. Next driver on the racetrack, continuing what is pretty much a bit of a rookie foray here at a Pro Late Model competition in 2024 in the Wilson Motorsports, number 24 out of Huntington Beach, California, representing LPG Transport, Pacific Coast Propane, and Factory Canopies, and Stange Oval. This is Jake Bowman. Not a lot of history here at this very tough racetrack for that of Bowman, but the race team, of course, being that they field several different types of race cars, certainly has a pretty deep playbook to work with when it comes to getting around the Orange County Speedway and tracks similar to this venue. Bowman's second lap is gonna go right to the top by six thousandths of a second. First lap didn't look like all that much to smile about, but he was saving the best for last. Bowman to the pole and back out on the racetrack. And if you're just seeing it, you may have to do a double take with how similar that these race cars look, both in the late model stock and the pro late model with an identical paint scheme in the number 71 Team Chevrolet, Wheeler Trucking, and Victory Custom Trailer Chevrolet out of Dryden, Michigan. Welcome back to the racetrack this time in a pro late models, the 71 of Katie Hettinger, whose first lap is good for third and needs to find 35 one thousandths of a second to try and match the lap just set by Jake Bowman. 14 0 5 6 for Hettinger. Is the second lap a bit better? No. Survey says 71 of Katie Hettinger, third fastest of six so far. Oh, and boy, did Luke Baldwin just have a moment off of turn four. Yeah, and that's not the time at which you want to have a moment like that. Lucky for him, though, this is his warm up lap. You mentioned the name of the driver in this car. Aiden King drove a pair of really solid races to start 2024 for this organization. It was sixth in championship points. However, Luke Baldwin was offered the opportunity to come out here today. And the driver who is the son of Daytona 500 winning crew chief Tommy Baldwin, 
Gets his hand back in a full body stock car. The Walker Motorsports entry. First lap for Baldwin is going to come across fifth fastest. That's a 14 128 the first time by for Luke Baldwin, who captured the King of the Modified title at South Boston Speedway a couple of months ago. He moves up one more spot to fourth is that of Baldwin, just shy of the lap time that Katie Hedinger ran for third. It's going to be a fourth place effort for Luke Baldwin for the moment. Again, they struggle with that car this weekend, but looks to have turned things around here on Saturday afternoon. Now out onto the racetrack in the number 35 Corvette Parts.net, LKN Mechanical. Where's Machine Chevrolet out of Mooresville, North Carolina? You saw his brother earlier qualifying in a late model stock. It'll turn things over to the defending series champion here in the pro late models in Caden Quaffle. Made the move over to his family owned race team here in 2024. First lap is a good one for Caden Quaffle. Just four hundredths of a second off of the provisional pole by the number 24 of Jake Bowman. And Quaffle's second time through is going to pick up, but not enough. Enough to move to the inside of row two for now. Third fastest for that 35 of Caden Quaffle. 14 the lap of record. Here's a driver who certainly knows how to get around this racetrack. He won two of his three Carolina Pro Late Model races here between 2020 and 2021. The other race finished second. He has certainly been on a roll at this venue. First opportunity, though, to tackle it with a Cars Tour Pro Late Model. In the CB Partners, AFCO Ultimate, QM, and Long Acre Racing Products, and RE Suspension number 43 is that of Nick Loden out of Stanley, North Carolina. And his first time around is gonna be in the top five for that of Loden. And that beautiful looking Corvette bodied race car. Little bit of a slide there as he comes to the checkered flag, but it doesn't hinder him enough. Below the 14 second bracket for that of Nick Loden to the Malle pole. And that is absolutely, again, we call this America's fastest 3 8 mile. That is <laughs> absolutely hauling the mail around this 3 8 mile racetrack. It turns things over to a driver who's looking for a little bit of luck to match the speed that they've had in this number 65. Joe Roaster, 90 Creative, and Joe's Racing Products Toyota for Tanner Motorsports out of Auburn, Washington. This is Tyler Tanner, been awfully fast and showed strongest at Southern National Motorsports Park to open the year. For now, Tyler Tanner just a tenth off the pole, but for now, that's eighth fastest. It is competitive here in these pro late models. Is second go around better? It is going to net him one spot. Up to seventh goes Tyler Tanner, 14 1 0 5 for Tanner, who bests Tristan McKee by just a thousandth of a second. We mentioned how Andrew Grady was finally able to shake some of the bad luck that plagued him to start his season on the late model stock side. Perhaps the same can be said for this driver. Back-to-back -back DNFs to start the season for a driver who had an amazing 2013 finishing third in points. Second race, though, with this team in the Alliance Driveaway Solutions, Leapfrog Landscaping, and Players Asphalt Maintenance number nine out of Weaverville, North Carolina. Here is Ashton Higgins, whose first lap matches the car number. He's going to slot into ninth. So so far, the 11 cars have been on the racetrack. We have seen these pros be more prone to increase their speed the second time through. Higgins is going to try to do the same. He will go a little bit faster, but not enough to move up on the pylon. Higgins will remain ninth for now. We'll also say there's been a lot more sunlight that has adorned the racetrack, I would say, over the last 30 or 40 minutes or so. It was relatively cloudy here today. Again, no chance of rain anywhere in the forecast. It's not because some wood up here in the broadcast booth, but it has been a gorgeous day. And I think for this driver, trying to narrow in the focus after just, again, Connor Jones and the late model stocks was hoping to pull double duty. But unfortunately, with the lap time that he laid down and the owner's points provisionals, he is out of the late model stock race. So this number 44 Jones Utility Construction Toyota for the Jones Racing Organization going to have to be the one to try and set the bar here. And indeed he does. Connor Jones fastest second time through. Improves on each of his laps. 13, 932 for Connor Jones. Goes right to the top of the charts. That is how you rebound. Yeah, you want to talk about shaking off the agony of defeat right there. Hats off to that of Connor Jones for being able to focus on the agenda at hand. And now the Malay pole belongs to that of Connor Jones. 
on the racetrack now. Our Fury race car's hard charger from that of Hickory last time out. In the Global Emissions Systems, Cook's Headers, and National Ataxia Foundation for a family-owned operation out of Wardsville. Here's Dylan Garner, who clocks in eighth fastest on his first time around. Garner made only two starts last season, trying to commit to the full tour and bounce back from early damage sustained at Hickory to be able to salvage a very strong result. Garner's second time around is going to continue to hold him in the eighth spot, even though he went a little bit faster that time by. But Connor Jones is still the man as perhaps the most dangerous bullet in the chamber is about to fire. You saw a couple of cars go out, both through pro late model and late model stock qualifying, that had the yellow uh, rookie stripe on the tail of the race car. It declares that, yes, they are declaring for rookie points, although we are not going to have to do that for this driver who is on a hot streak. You mentioned earlier with Bobby McCarty when you are hot. Uh, you are hot. Well, you could say that about Kyle Campbell and the performance that he's been able to put on recently in the RPM Racing Engine Chevrolet for his family-owned race team out of Conover, North Carolina. First lap for Campbell is just shy of the pole. He's going to continue the streak here. Does he have enough to challenge for the top spot and win the Male pole? He comes up just short, 13,974 for Kyle Campbell, who continues his incredible start to the 2024 campaign. We heard from this driver earlier today. He talked about the importance of qualifying, but expressed some concern because of when they mocked up this car in practice and how it felt. We'll see what he has underneath them when it matters most. In the page construction, Otson Tire, Tailgate Systems, and Door Works number 51 for Maverick Page Motorsports out of Alito, Texas. Here comes Caden Honeycutt. Won the season finale last season. Now trying to see what he can do here in qualifying. First lap is going to be that of 10th at a 14-0-9-0. Trying to get down in that 13 second bracket to see if he can make up one of those first two rows. Second time around for Honeycutt and wow! Whew. Right up to the front row just shy by five thousandths of a second. Honeycutt teased up. He may have been a little bit concerned about that run. That was solid. All the while, one of the newcomers to the field, Luke Baldwin, is standing by with Jacqueline Drake. Currently in the top 10 when it comes to qualifying right now, but Luke Baldwin, your first time here at Orange County. What's it been like to get to know this track a little bit better? Man, th this place is a lot of fun. You know, I came here a couple weeks ago with the Tour Modified, and uh, we had a solid run going until I made a mistake and set us pretty far back. But um, this is a really cool racetrack. It's super fast for what it is. Like, you look at it, it doesn't, it looks worn out, abrasive, it's super bumpy, but it's got a lot of speed and uh, it races really well, you know, two grooves, three grooves sometimes. So I'm excited to race a full fender car here. You know, the racing style of racing is a little bit different in these than it was in the tour mod. So uh, I think we'll have a solid piece. Uh, I think we're sitting like eighth or something in qualifying right now. The field's just super close and uh, I think we'll have a really good long run race car. So I'm excited to see what we can do tonight. Luke Baldwin found out with under 24 hours that he was going to be wheeling that number 15. Again, first time in a late model stock for him at Orange County and plenty to learn. Plenty to learn indeed, as you saw uh, Brandon Lopez in the 6B. Uh, the Atlanta Pavey Chevrolet clocked in 15th fastest in his two laps around this racetrack. So 15th of 16 cars that we've seen thus far. So we turn things over to the number 19 of Jessica Can in the Black Acid Apparel, Ford Brothers Auto Repair, and Driven Sunglasses Chevrolet out of Kernersville, North Carolina. We'll see where Jessica Can clocks in. 17th goes the number 19, 14, 457 for Jessica Can. Here's a driver making his second career at second consecutive Cars Tour start. Unfortunately, retired early with us at Hickory. Last time out due to a mechanical problem. This is the Cookout, Coca-Cola, Cheerwine, Audubon Farms, and Putt-Putt Golf and Games number 88 for that of Mad Max, Max Reeves. Reeves is someone who has a Carolina Pro Late Model victory. Came back at Caraway earlier this season. Also has been very impressive throughout his ranks running up through Legend Car competition. And so far, he is fast here today as well. Reeves to seventh on his first time by. He could threat for a front row spot. Let's see what he's got second time through. He will move up to the top five. Max Reeves in car number 88 to fit with a handful of cars, make that just a couple of cars to go. 
We saw the speed earlier out of Jake Bowman and know that that car is going to be awfully fast. And in this tandem with Renfrew Motorsports and Wilson Motorsports, got to imagine that this double zero r r race parts Toyota will be in the conversation as well. Out of Camdia, New Hampshire, this is the double zero of Jimmy Renfrew Jr. Finished second at Southern National Motorsports Park and followed that up being competitive up in the top five all weekend long at Hickory and Renfrew. Indeed, he is fast, 13,950 on his second go around and Renfrew will start the inside of row two for now. Renfrew clocks in. Yep, he's going to stand on that 13,950 in the third position. Final car on the racetrack proudly slapped the Rookie of the Year tags on his race car before he rolled out for this qualifying effort in what is his first full time season in pro late model competition with the Z Max Car Store. This is the Concord Wealth Partners, Concord Asset Management, and special team manufacturer number 96 for that of Highlands Motorsports out of Lando Lakes, Florida. TJ DeCare into this race tied for seven with the championship points. His first time around for that of DeCare is going to put him, Simon scoring updates for us, 13th fastest the first time around. It will be the last car to come to Brandon Willard for the checkered flag in this Molle pole session. Lap number two will slow down. And how about the level of perseverance for that of Connor Jones, who claims the Molle pole award for the Pro Late Models here at Orange County Speedway over Caden Honeycutt, Jimmy Renfrew Jr., Kyle Campbell, and Nick Loden, your top five. And just look how close they are at the front of the field. I mean, we, we talked about whether cars are going to be able to break down into that 13-second bracket. Five cars are able to accomplish that. The top five, Eric, in qualifying, all the way from Connor Jones, who wins the Molly Pole Award, down to Nick Loden, just separated by 65 one-thousandths of a second. That is close, and it is... Starting to become reminiscent, we've talked about how competitive the late model stocks have been over the last you know, several years and how that continues to get closer. The pro late models starting to emulate that in, in a big way here at Orange County. And this qualifying session certainly proves it. Second career pro late model start for that of Connor Jones under the Cars Tour banner. He has much experience in these race cars, but it is his first career Male Pole Award. Let's hear from Connor Jones, who's with Jacqueline. Congratulations, Connor, bringing home the pole award in the pro late model division and quite a swing coming from your late model stock qualifying effort to now leading the field to green. What's going through your mind in the differences that you just had to overcome in the last hour? Two totally different cars. Um, there's not much to these compared to late model stock. You have to have a perfect car in late model stock to qualify good and to race good. But um, we didn't make the show in the late model stock, but we'll come back in the pro and uh, We'll try and win the thing. Um, just got to thank all my guys, Bobby, uh, Levi, just everybody who really helps put this together, uh, Brad Newman for keeping me safe up top, and uh, hopefully we'll have a good race. I know you're a man that likes to hide his emotions a lot of time, but how exciting are you to be able to lead this field to green and then maybe even take home a win here today at Orange County? Yeah, it'd be exciting. Um, I'm not very good at this place. This is not one of my best tracks at all. Um, but it's been good to us in the pro. It's not been great to us in the late mile stock, but it's been good to us in the pro, and hopefully we can take it in the uh, take it to victory lane. Well, you're starting at a good position. Uh, Connor Jones going to roll off in the pole on the pro late model division this evening. Thanks, Jacqueline. And I know that a lot of people have given Connor Jones a bit of a hard time because of how much passion he puts into his race product and what he wants to do to be successful in this sport. And boy, is he fast. I mean, that is one driver who knows how to wheel a race car. And this is perhaps one of the toughest challenges anyone will ever have to go through to shake off disappointment mere minutes before you have to try to go out and perform again. He did a great job here this afternoon, did that of Connor Jones. He's going to be a threat in this pro race. And Blake, as we inch closer to race time, yesterday afternoon, you had a chance to walk about the pits and get a good look at some of the things that were happening. We got another pit walk coming up here in a moment. Oh, boy, that was a fun one with Rob Blount. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see that pit walk here when we come back to Orange County Speedway. Debriefs continuing. More coverage on Flow Racing, the Orange Blossom 250 coming up.
Well, Rays fans, as you can see, qualifying has concluded for both the late model stocks. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, as you can see, qualifying is just wrapped up for the late model stock cars and the pro late models. So one of the things that we are going to start to inch closer to is going to be our fan fest here in about 20 minutes time. So this is an announcement for all drivers and all race fans. Again, the autograph session for the Fan Fest will be taking place behind the grandstands. There's going to be a pretty noticeable setup that you'll be able to see. All the drivers will be there. They are anxious to meet with you, greet with you, talk with you, and have a chance to share a bit of an experience and a memory of what is a highly anticipated return to the Orange County Speedway with the Z-Max Cars Tour presented by Sound Gear. Again, that is going to take place at 5.15 p.m. to 6 p.m p.m. will be the Fan Fest and Autograph Session again behind the grandstand. So drivers and teams, if you are preparing to bring hero cards, whatever you want to bring on up with your driver, make sure that you are guiding them behind the grandstands, again behind the main building here at the start finish line at the Orange County Speedway. One more reminder, again, for you fans and drivers, the Fan Fest that will kick off 20 minutes from now at 5.15 p.m. will be taking place behind the grandstands. And we hope to see every fan who is wrapped around this racetrack as we are still about two hours away from the green flag of racing action to be back here talking to these drivers before they strap in and get set to do battle. While you're back there, be sure to stop by and see our friends at the Z-Max booth, and you could enter to win an autographed racing helmet signed by all of the Cars Tour drivers, and you could also learn how Z-Max could help improve your car's performance. And also, while you're back there, stop by and see our friends at Velasta. They have a setup there as well. Did you know that 92% of all diseases are linked to inflammation? Fight chronic inflammation by taking Velasta, the most powerful antioxidant on the planet that is patented to fight inflammatory diseases. Learn more at Velasta.net. That's Velasta.net. And don't forget to use the promo code RACING for 5% off. If you have any questions or want to learn more about their parts, or I should say their product, you can stop by and see them 